and welcome. This is Mary Ellen McGonigal with your weekly MEM Edge show. This is the show where we bring you where the action is in the broader markets. We are on our way to the second half of the year. Not so pretty the first half, but let's go ahead and see what we are going to be covering here today. As usual, we are going to take a look at the broader markets. It was a tough week again for the indices, but we'll see where we closed for the week. Also, some of those headline news that drove price action that is continuing to be highly impactful as it relates to economic data. Also, the markets, as mentioned, is continuing to digest this data. But there is one key metric that I can point you toward that will, in essence, override some of this data and really is quite telling. Also, we are going to take a look at how some corporations are coming out with guidance. They did so this week. We had a couple of companies come out with late Q2 reports And that is impactful. Could be telling as we move into earnings season in about a week and a half here, somewhere around the 12th or 13th. I guess that would be two weeks from now. So you will want to stick around for that. So let's take a look at some of those headline news this week. We did get first quarter GDP numbers, and there were a lot in the way of estimates. The final number was announced last week, and we did see gross domestic product decline by 1.6%. Of course, the outlook for the second quarter is not very strong. So there, this did bring out recession fears as defined by two consecutive negative quarters of growth. So that was certainly one item. Durable good orders came out. They did rise in May. That, of course, brought out the fear. As you may recall, last week we were talking about strong economic data being responded to negatively because it would push the Federal Reserve to raise interest rates, be more aggressive. So we did get that rise in durable goods orders. Also, consumer confidence numbers came out and they fell to a 16-month low. This is all about inflation and interest rate fears getting to these consumers. This drop in consumer confidence points to a slowing. So we were getting mixed signals for sure last week relating to the broader market and the economy. And key inflation data did signal a cooling off of inflation. And that was the uh, C, I'm sorry, the PCE number that came out later this week. So that was certainly good news. This is the key as it relates to what we're on the lookout for as investors. It's not so much interest rates. It is inflation. That's the key metric here these days. Certainly something the Fed is looking at very closely as it relates to their monetary policy program going forward. We did get manufacturing data and it did show growth slowing at to its slowest pace in two years. So this was something that was positive for the markets. Today, we are on Friday seeing a rally into the close. But as you can see, very mixed response to each of these various economic data signals. Also, next week, we do have a holiday shortened week, of course. And the economic calendar is fairly light, and sometimes that can cause additional volatility without those bumpers, those guideposts to help investors decipher what may or may not be upcoming in the Fed's. That's their, of course, the Fed's response to all of this data is critical and key to what we're seeing in the broader market. So from here, let's go ahead, take a look at where we closed. We can see on this daily price chart of the S&P 500. I'm recording this about 40 minutes before the close. We are getting a rally into the close today, but overall, we wanna pay attention to the market's price action for the entire week. We're down about two and a half percent. Last week, we did get a follow through day in the NASDAQ, and that does indicate a potential bottoming of the markets. However, the NASDAQ was down almost 5%. So that uh, follow-through day price action was 
first. So we are back in a period, certainly overall down trending. But let's just take a look at the S&P here. We are poised to potentially close the week back above this green 10-day simple moving average. However, your outside momentum indicators, this is your RSI, remains in negative territory below that 50. And the stochastics, faster moving momentum indicator, it is trending upward, but it too is below this 50 level. Each of your key moving averages, certainly your 50, 200 day and your 21 day remain in a downtrend. And I'm pointing that out because during normally uptrending bullish phases, those key moving averages are going to be trending upward and acting as support. When we have this downward trending occurrence here, oftentimes they act as resistance as the broader markets attempt to find a bottom. But certainly a close above that 10-day would be constructive. Ideally, at some point, we are going to want to see a break of that shorter-term moving average up above the 21 and then ideally up above the 50 and so on so that we can at some point in time experience a nice new uptrend. We are still very, very early in that potential but as always, keeping a very close eye because there are pockets of strength. I talked about that last week. I'm going to carry that into this week. There are areas that can be participated in. So let's go ahead and move on and take a look at those pockets of strength. From here, we're looking at a candle glance two-month price chart view of the 11 underlying sectors in the S&P 500. And I've gone ahead, added this relative strength indicator. I'm going to sort these sectors in descending order. We want to see where that relative outperformance is and all about defensive sector, consumer staples, and real estate. We did touch upon this last week in the sense that this very much was the uh, fact last week, as well as we saw these defensive sectors up here in the forefront outperforming. So we're seeing a nice continuation rally in these defensive areas. I'll get a little bit more into that as we move on here. But of course, you want to be aware of those underperforming sectors and take a look down here. We can see technology is down. It underperformed the S&P this week as well as the NASDAQ. We'll talk about why, where the weakness is in these growth stocks. Also, energy is down here. Now, I will say it was one of the two, three groups that was up this week, a, a little more, uh, actually up 0.5, so a half of a percent. But we can see that overall there is weakness taking place. Let's just take a quick look here. This was a big outperformer, of course, year to date up into the beginning of June. And we are seeing this deterioration on the daily chart. I have been on the lookout for a potential downtrend report Reversal, not so this week at the very least, and we can talk about why. Let's move on from here and take a look at some of those underlying sub-industry groups in the broader markets. And this is something else that you can do. I tend to put higher growth ETFs in here, but I also have metrics that are very instrumental in providing insights into the broader markets. That's going to be the US dollar volatility. I also want to see where gold is, how that's performing, interest rates, and so on. So I have that RSI indicator here, descending order. I'm going to go ahead and update that. And let's take a look. The US dollar up here at the forefront, the dollar is continuing to climb higher. The impact here is among these multinational global companies. You can think Caterpillar, 3M, other areas. Those stocks are suffering in the face of a rising dollar. That's just one area that is being impacted here. Also, uh, let's just take a quick look because when the dollar is on the rise, you will oftentimes see uh, gold and other 
areas economically sensitive oil will drop. And in fact, we did see that last week with gold declining. Let's just take a quick look at Brent crude because that is something uh, that I brought up. And we can see that Brent crude is still elevated. It's at about 109. However, that uptrending phase is uh, not in place at this point in time. So we are seeing a bit of a deterioration in the price of oil, which in turn is another factor as it relates to these energy stocks underperforming overall, although again, last week up half of a percent in the face of a negative broader market. Let's take a look at some of these other strong areas here. And this is something I highlighted several weeks ago, the biotech ETF, IBB. This particular area was down less than a half of a percent. We are seemingly rallying into the close, so we may end flat, but the bigger point it it is that these biotechs are far outperforming negative broader market indices. S&P poised to trend down about 2.5% this week. So very nice firming up in these biotechs. I did talk about it last week in my MEM Edge report. I am going to discuss it further. It has a lot to do as a hint with the possibility of a recession. Uh, Again, take a look if you haven't already. Use that link below, four-week trial of my twice-weekly MEM Edge report, and I will expand much further upon that and highlight stocks that are looking quite compelling in that biotech space. So beyond, let's take a look at some of these other areas up here at the forefront. And surprisingly, software is up here, but this is all about last week's significant 9% rally carrying through as it relates to portraying strength. Uh, This RSI and two-month daily price chart view is not very whippy, which is a good thing. It's not going to immediately respond to the prior five days. But I will tell you that software was down almost 6% this week. And this is all about earnings. I talked about that being beginning to be impactful in some of these various groupings where companies are either coming out with numbers or are providing guidance, and in this case, guiding lower. So let's take a look and move along further here because we want to take a look. I just thought I would share with you uh, small cap stocks. They were down 2.5%, and it is an area that is now, as of this week, posting higher lows. We are still too early. We had that same dynamic here in May, higher lows as it advanced. So keeping an eye on that, small caps do tend to lead in new bull market phases. We want them to outshine, not quite yet. So let's move on here. I did mention one metric that is generally overriding all of the economic data that we are seeing. Because as mentioned, by and large, we are seeing inflation potentially slowing. We are seeing slower growth in manufacturing and otherwise, pardon me, but the broader markets are not rallying. When we see, uh, let's take a look at the 10-year yield. And we can see this week that the yield is declining on that 10-year. The point here is that when interest rates are declining, oftentimes you will see growth stocks, in particular technology, retail, and otherwise, rise in response. And that is what we saw last week, a significant rally in certainly the mega cap fang stocks and other growth areas as interest rates pulled back. Not so this week. And this is that overriding metric that I mentioned to you. And the thinking is that because growth and other areas did not rally in a declining rate environment, it is because there is a sense that the Fed will remain aggressive in their interest rate hike. So it's all about sentiment that is going to override whether it is economic data. Uh, So keep an eye on this tenure. This is going to be really telling as it relates to broader market sentiment and can really help guide you as to whether you should dip your toe in or not. And one other last area we can take a quick look at here is semiconductors. This is SOXX, the semiconductor ETF. We can see that it had another tough week down nine and a half percent. 
This is in line with the prior week here, double digit decline. Last week, we talked about growth stocks on the rise as interest rates were moving, but this week, not so. So severe decline here. And again, all about management guiding and earnings. MU Micron is a bellwether semiconductor related stock. They did come out with their numbers. Not uh, They did guide estimates lower for the remainder of the year. Unfortunately, that caused a real domino effect among semiconductors as many other semis fell in tandem going forward. And this is very typical. There are these bellwether names that report and set the stage. In two weeks, we're going to be on the lookout for stocks such as Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley. They're going to be the first to report, depending on not only their earnings, but their guidance that could certainly set the way for these other uh, bank stocks. But I digress. There was another uh, action that took place among semiconductors this week, and it was Intel came out and they did cut their pricing on their processors due to reduced PC, personal computer demand. So in turn, AMD and a number of other semiconductor firms that provide to that PC space also fell in tandem. So from here, I'm going to share with you a couple of other areas that are definitely worth paying attention to. We are looking at what's called a perf chart on stockcharts.com. And this is just over the last five days. You can go back as lengthy, as long as you'd like. But I did want to highlight to you the fact that growth stocks are underperforming value this week. So this red line is that Vanguard growth ETF. VUG is uh, actually VTV is the ticker symbol for that. And here we can see the performance it is uh, at this 2.5 level. That's relative to VTV, which is the Vanguard Value ETF. So in other words, we are in a phase where value stocks are beginning to outperform. And we saw that the utilities, consumer staples, and we can say healthcare as well. These uh, value is being defined as higher yielding, lower multiple stocks. So that is a phenom that is taking shape. I will, of course, with my MEM Edge report, keep very on top of that and share with you stocks in that value space that can participate in that outperformance. So from here, let's take a look. I'm going to share with you the underlying 30 stocks within the Dow Jones index. The reason here is that the Dow was down about one and a half percent, so quite a bit less certainly than the NASDAQ, four and a half percent, S&P two and a half. There has been relative outperformance among these Dow over certainly the past four weeks or so. So let's take a look. I did have the list here populating those Dow names gone ahead, added that RSI descending order. Let's go ahead and update this list. And I'm going to share with you where that relative outperformance is taking place among these Dow 30 stocks. And I don't think you'll see a lot in the way of surprises here. Last week, we really uncovered that fact that healthcare was on the move. UNH is United Healthcare, of course, a healthcare insurance provider. And take a look, downtrend reversal continuing to take shape. Nice high volume characteristics there. And McDonald's very much on the rise today, up another 2%. Uh, this is another area that does well in recessionary periods. Uh, we can take a look at these consumer staples stocks, Coca-Cola up here at the forefront. So really, these are those pockets of strength that I mentioned earlier in the show, because there are certain technology, other areas that are very much lagging. However, these pockets of strength for those of you that are nimble, that have guidance, such as the MEM Edge Report, you can participate in these rallies if you were so inclined. By and large, if you're not going to be sitting in front of your 
a computer on a daily basis. It doesn't have to be all day, every day. Uh, you may not want to participate or dip your toe in. Here's Merck, MRK, another one of the large pharmas that we talked about. And then again, up here in the forefront, Procter & Gamble, J&J &J at your leisure. I urge you to take a look. We did see a nice rally this week in insurance stocks. These are the low PE high yielding areas that I mentioned. Of course, we'd be remiss to not talk about these underperformers. I talked about that rising dollar impacting Caterpillar, 3M, Dow, down here, also economically sensitive areas that are under distribution. So I am going to leave it at that. Everyone, I hope you have a wonderfully long 4th of July weekend, and I'll look for you here again next Friday. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.